Hey folks, uh, looking at running the TypeScript Playground as a VS Code extension. I sort of looked at this for the last few days um, to try to get a sense of you know what the blockers are, how it works, how all the pieces could come together. And I feel like I've got a much more nuanced opinion around a lot of it all now. Um, so when I first started thinking about this, I tried to get a sense of what I felt might be the blockers. So one of the first ones is how do we handle something like this where we have multiple TypeScript versions? And after chatting with uh, Matt D on the VS Code team, we sort of came to the conclusion that this sort of system here could work too, which is you know the select TypeScript version, um, which is an option that you can always have in any version of VS Code. I have a nightly version, that's an extension I install locally, but um, effectively you can set it here as select TypeScript version, that's just in the default version of VS Code. And we can have it so that this extension can tell the TypeScript extension, hey, these are all the supported versions. So this is that list that you would see in here basically. Um, and then that would then tell the official TypeScript extension inside VS Code, hey, this is the version of TypeScript, this is the URL. We tested running it through uh, JS Deliver and that worked out pretty well. So um, we're fine with that. Uh, I, don't, I think running it will be very, just as easy as it was in, um, in the existing, uh, it, it would be very easy to port that. Um, the next things that started to be interesting in terms of like, could this be a blocker or not was um, this like handling URLs. So the, there's two aspects to that. One is like, you know, we have TypeScript lang.org slash play and you know, all of those pre existing URLs we cannot break. We can't switch those to be like VS code.dev slash playground. Um, but what we can do is have uh, VS code.dev basically be play.typescriptlang.org and just like if you accidentally go to uh, playground which is what the typescript playground used to be uh, a very very long time ago this sort of automatically forwards you to this playground and we could do the same thing to play.typescriptlang.org uh, therefore keeping backwards compatibility with all existing urls um, and then that would act a little bit like this sort of opening vs code button i've got here that this actually sends the real code from what was in here to, to, to your extension. So that would, had this been different, uh, so as you can see, I've just changed that text. So that would remove the text there. So that's as though like I had clicked that URL and the URL infrastructure works uh, exactly as I you, we'd hope. The next thing that's interesting is like this kind of two occasionally free sort of navigation panes uh, approach. Um, so over here, you can see that I have like the same sort of JS, TS and errors um, that they, you know, they're not all fully working, but this one definitely is. So like, and you can see as I change that, it changes it here. Um, the, the way that that currently works is that I'm using a VS Code uh, insiders like hidden feature that allows you to set one of these sort of sidebars as uh, an entire pane on the other side, uh, which is why when you see it hit running here in VS Code at Dev, it's actually not uh, like running through that special thing. It's just re replacing basically this this area on the side for the workspace. Um, so that that is feasible, but right now that's using an insider's feature to get it to work. And I've already made an API request that would say, hey, I'd like the ability to boot up into something where this is a sidebar viewlet. Uh, and I haven't talked to anybody in the VS Code team about what whether that's feasible and whether they agree with that API decision. But we're kind of like to to not have this would be like would be a very strange experience. You would end up having like a tab like this that has all your settings and you know tells you your JS or whatever, and you can close it and then you have to kind of reopen it when you want it, which is a pretty strange experience. Um, next up then is that Playground plugins can just be rebuilt using the, the, the new API. So I don't think there's any problems with blockers there. Um, the only, the, the big question mark that I'm going to talk to some people today about is like, you know, if we're going to do it on that, we're going to need to care about this area up here. Like we need that to match this. It may not have to match it perfectly. So like, you know, it may not need to have the full copy of search. Maybe search is a clickable button and it takes you through to a search page on the TypeScript website instead. Um, but you know, that that obviously needs to be there to make it feel like, you know, play.typescriptline.org still works. Um, and so thinking through it as, as a user, some of the good stuff is that, you know, you get the familiarity of VS Code. So chances are most people have already used it because it's free and it's like very well used. Um, you get the ability to have stuff like your extensions, your themes, and, um, and 
you know, your settings are synced across like your VS code and the, the version of the playground. That's very nice. Uh, and people can actually download the extension and run it locally. So there's this little button here that allows you to sort of open up a remote something, a sort of virtual file system system uh, thing. And that in this case would allow you to just open a playground in your editor um, and just work on it there. And then, you know, it's kind of throw away code um, and we'll figure a nice way to make it so you can get the URL representation out of that too. Probably just be a sidebar thing, uh, which I think would be quite a nice experience. Um, then like from the TypeScript team's perspective, like we don't need so much custom build metadata stuff going on behind the scenes to run the playground. Um, the playground has all this custom like workflow management to handle new tags or new um, or PR builds. All that stuff is actually uh, doesn't need to exist in, in this world because it can just run entirely off NPM. Um, and then we can just use the JS deliver API to sort of grab that JavaScript. The other one that's kind of interesting is that then like if someone installs the TypeScript Playground uh, extension, then that could mean that they could get some of the features that are available in the Playground, like this sort of cute little um, you know query syntax that tells you what a thing is as you're working. Um, whether that's something that gets into core, I don't know, but either way, that extension could still then provide a way to sort of extract out the work that you're doing and put, turn it into a, a useful uh, environment in a virtual file system. From the TypeScript perspective, that's pretty good then. We also don't need to worry so much about accessibility auditing, like this, this page gets very thoroughly audited and it takes quite a lot of time and work for any for anybody to kind of maintain because of that, especially as the accessibility auditing tools improve and we find new uh, error messages all the time. Um, then uh, what else have we got? We've got, right. Then it's it, it, it would probably be more maintainable as a code base because it would be a VS code extension, which means that it is um, it is a, an API that everybody on the team knows um, to some extent. Uh, then, and then I guess from the like the downsides like v VS Code is definitely a more distracting environment for users. Like you know this is only what you need for doing the playground, but you suddenly go into like this, and so and you know you've now got source control, run and debug, uh, your extensions. In my case, the remote explorer, um, and like that can probably be solved to some extent whereby you know we disable search and source control and maybe some of these other like view containers uh inside the vs code that their version for uh the playground but it's hard to say whether those are like a great fit um the free column setup is undecided whether that's going to ship or not uh so who knows where that's going so that's a bit of a question mark for us on our side um the way that the system works is that this is kind of like a web view running separate from all of this, running separate from the extension. So there is a bit more, there's a bit more abstractions needed to be able to sort of um, coordinate more things. And to some extent, the playground is one entity, but to run an extension, you need the extension that will be talking to the official TypeScript extension to pull out some of the things like the JS uh, for the current uh, file, uh, and DTS or to like, you know, pull out useful metadata. Um, and so there's going to be this sort of extra uh, coordination that doesn't need to exist in the current uh, playground, but can probably be quite neatly abstracted. Uh, and localization probably needs, well, will definitely need tweaking uh, because uh, that, oh, uh, maybe not. Maybe if, uh, if the extension lives inside the TypeScript website, it can pull it in during builds like everything else happens. So maybe that's not a problem. Um, so yeah, I, I still have nuanced feelings. I think that, I think a lot of this is very feasible. Um, uh, I, I think for the majority, I think this is a better experience for the playground. So, um, so consider me a, 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 a positive, after this exploration, I think. Yeah. So that was my summary on trying to figure out whether the playground VS Code extension makes sense. Yeah.